everyone, Zeddy here again with another Titans card review. We have the next Druid Legendary, the two epics, and um, there is some pretty broken stuff, and Druid right now is the worst performing class in Hearthstone, sub 40% across all ranks. It needs help, and um, yeah, with the, already the really good Titan coming, I think there is some pretty good help for Druid here, and if you want to win some of these cards, we have a giveaway going on of two regular creators, two mega bundles out of my pocket. All you have to do is like and comment in the video description below, be subscribed to the channel. We are less than 200 subs away from unlocking that next me mega bundle, so hit that sub button, make me go broke. I also have a Twitter giveaway going on for two, or sorry, three more standard bundles, courtesy of Blizzard this time. I'll link that one below if you want to enter that but wanted to give you guys an opportunity to get in on all the giveaways and there'll be even more coming as i've got more goodies waiting for another time anyways let's look at the cards and yes druid looks awfully scary and there's still more cards to come later today we have disciple of Eonar, a four mana four four uh epic minion battle cry your next choose one card has both effects combined and it's important to note this costs four mana curves really well into nourish where you will get to gain two mana crystals draw three cards that could be really strong you can play that seven mana spell that summons like five treants and gives plus two plus four and taunt that's just a board fill in itself. There's a legendary gonna be taking a look at later that could also be really good. This type of setup effect we have seen to an extent that hasn't really paid off a ton for Druid where like you would play your next choose one card would play the other, or you, you basically would play the other half of the choose one card. I think it was like a three mana two four. I've also been able to discover cards and combine their effects, which was pretty good at duels, never really on ladder. But this type of card, I feel like it's really strong with a lot of the expensive choose one cards and you curve like just the dream of curving in a nourish alone on this can be really good. I think this can see play in that style of ramp druid. There's definitely a lot of possibilities, not just one card to hit. There's a bunch you can hit. I'm gonna give it a three out of five in standard, a two out of five in wild where I think it's way too slow for wild strategies, but it certainly has a shot in standard, especially with some of the cards uh, we're gonna take a look at. And one of them being Life Binder's Gift. I think this card is absurd and a lot of things I don't like about Hearthstone design a lot of the time. And what is that? Well, it's a nature spell that has choose one. You get two random nature spells, so it could be the same spell twice. It could be whatever, right? Um, I don't believe it can get itself. That typically doesn't work that way. But the big part is the second half or reduce the cost of spells in your hand by one. That can make a miracle growth, seven mana, nourish, four mana, wild growth, two mana. Like you can get in theory on a full hand of spells minus nine mana which is really solid which is really good and pretty much any card like this has historically seen play uh the mage spell you had to like honorably kill deal two damage you would discount spells in your hand by one saw a lot of play and that was a lot harder to set up this you just play it like there's not much more to it than that it's really cheap i think this card is absurd in both formats standard wild that whole miracle druid with like tony just got a big buff with this and i don't like that because that deck is super frustrating makes bio project zero mana so you can play zero mana gain two mana play it right away do absurd stuff you also of course have that overheal card that we revealed for the mini set where yeah one mana you get to if you overheal you refresh crystals you can make that zero mana gain a bunch i think this is a five star card in standard and wild i don't know if it'll take off right away but the power level of this just the second half let alone getting just some value like okay i don't have a lot of spells you know i've gotten the late game you can get value out of it later right there's really no downside to this card it is just to me an absurdly broken card. I'm giving it a five in both formats and I think it will lead to a lot of um, not so pleasant things. I think it might be a very complaint about card or will be one we go back later and be like, Zeddy, you're an idiot. You got this one wrong like we do all the time. Uh, next we have Ancient of Growth, a seven mana, five, five ancient. Unlike the seven, seven, you know, they buffed, what is it, Ancient of Lore? They buffed to a seven, seven. Still really weird on that one. Still doesn't see play, of course. Um, This is another choose one ancient. You either summon three two two treants so that goes alongside it making it like a seven mana 11 11 7 11 not too bad 
or you transform your trains into 5-5 five, five Ancients with Taunt. So if you combine this effect with that epic we looked at earlier, it would first summon the treants and then make them 5-5s five, with Taunt, giving you four 5-5s, five, five, three of which have Taunt, right? That's not too bad. Seems a little bit awkward, seems a little bit slow. Treant Druid's really not a thing, at least in Standard. And in Wild, this would be way too slow for that. And typically you wanna buff up your treants and this one you would be transforming them. You might be actually making them worse. I think it's pretty much a flat out two star card in both formats. I don't see this really being relevant unless Rarin's reveal shows some really, really good tree and support and he's only revealing four cards. So not quite sure of that. Of course, you have like force of nature and uh, you got other tree cards, but I just don't see this taking off. So yeah, two out of five in standard and wild. And lastly, we have some power creep, kind of. Yeah, I think so. We'll talk about what I mean. Freya, Keeper of Nature, an eight mana, four, six legendary minion. Well, that is just terrible stats. Disregard the card. Oh, wait, there is this thing that I struggle with, but we're gonna do it. It has text and we can read it. With choose one, duplicate your hand, or summon copies of all other friendly minions. So assuming you have minions on the board, you get the summon of them. I think the second half on this one is pretty irrelevant in most situations, but you know, you could get a big combo or just a big bunch of value on the board. But the first part is the pretty impressive and pretty gross one, which is power creep to an extent on Elise. Elise was a card, I believe, from Saviors of Old Doom. It was five mana. So it's like, is it really power creep if it's three mana more? But Elise required you to not run duplicates or at least not have duplicates in your deck. And she would copy her hand. That was her only effect. She would copy her hand. And that was a really relevant card. You could get like double. I remember the thing back in the day was like getting Coon and like keep doing that over and over, basically going infinite. You just keep copying Elise with Floop and Cooning. It was pretty, pretty crazy. And you ran a lease of cards that ran duplicates. You just cycled a lot. This, you don't have to. You can just duplicate your hand, but she is eight mana, the obvious big downside. However, you can copy things like the new Titan. You can have two of the new Titan in your hand. And when you play the Titan, the first ability, you refresh your mana. You could play the next Titan and then draw your deck, right? Something like that. And at the same time, you're getting two five fives with Taunt. So there's usually a lot of good stuff you can copy in Druid. And the Titan stands out as one of those things. Of course, there's a bunch of other cards. You could, you know, duplicate your, your mana cheat spells or just a bunch of tokens. You could get a bunch of value. Again, the main thing holding this card back is it's eight mana, but you're playing Druid. You can ramp as well as you have that five drop where if you, um, uh, what is it, finale it, you draw cards that cost six or more, discount this by one. This can be seven mana if you hit it with that. There's a lot of ways of, you know, getting to this a lot earlier and duplicating can just be very, very powerful. I think this can work in a ramp druid particular with the Titan, which I do think is going to be an absolute mainstay meta player in druid. And I think they go very well together. It is greedy, it is slow, but that's kind of what Druid does. And then they can get to win cons of like Jailer, Tony type of shenanigans or whatever, whatever they're up to. Their insane hero power. I'm gonna give this a four to five in standard. I think this is too slow for wild where you just, you can't play cards like this, even at eight, even with the value, I'm gonna give it a two. But in standard, I do think this will be a really powerful legendary mostly for the first part. You don't need to double up on it. Just duplicating your hand can be powerful. But again, you're playing an eight mana, four, six, possibly do nothing. It might just be a dud, but you know what? I'm gonna go with a four and we'll see if I'm wrong in the future. Anyways, Rarin's got a card reveal at like noon Pacific later today. We'll be reviewing that. And well, in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great day. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day and stay salty, my friends.